Cough. Hello. Hi. Are we ready? No. I have stage fright. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Sew Into Bourbon. Charlie and Glenn here again from, you guessed it, Charlie's Basement. Charlie, what are we doing tonight? What do we have here in front of us? Tonight, we're gonna talk about something very near and dear to my heart, bourbon. And more <laughs> specifically, thank you for laughing, Glenn. Uh, more specifically, old decanters. Specifically specific, Jim Beam decanters. What do you think of that? I love it. I'm excited about it. Um, probably like so many other people our age or older, um, you probably had a parent or a grandparent at some point who had a lot of these decanters or sitting drunk, around. drunk uncle, somebody. Right, right. I mean, somebody in your family had a bunch of these. I remember my grandfather who, uh, God rest his soul, has been passed away for, for many years, but he had a ton of these um, sitting high on top of one of his, his clothes dressers and oh gosh they were shaped like cars they were shaped like pistols all kinds of things i didn't know what they were when i was yeah. a kid i just thought they were cool so um i wish i still had some of those things don't we all you do i do <laughs> so i was lucky enough to stumble upon this one a co-worker of my wife's we were chatting about bourbon and different things and he says oh my grandparents who didn't drink by the way had closets and closets filled with Jim Beam decanters, and I still have a bunch of them. And I was like, tell me more. <laughs> and he was gracious enough. He sent one of these to work uh, with for my wife and brought it to me for us to review today. So number That's one, awesome. thank you to him. Yeah, and then number up. two, yeah. the story that Glenn just told about his grandpa, I think so many people have that story. And I also think it's interesting that in the 60s and 70s and even later in the 80s, People were collecting these bottles not to drink them. They maybe didn't drink at all. They were collecting them to collect them. Right. And I think that's really kind of interesting, a, a microcosm yeah. of time there. Very so. cool. And that's something me and you talked about a couple weeks ago. I thought, what? Why don't they do that now? Why aren't there more decanters out there now um, that people can collect? And Charlie's thought was, well, they don't really need to. They don't need to. <laughs> Bourbon selling on its own without that. Yeah, and I still think it would be a cool thing to yeah, do. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll get into that. But first, mm -hmm. we're going to open this thing and we're going to drink it. So, Let's do it. Uh, this is a Florida edition, as you can see. I'm going to hold it steady, and uh, through the magic of editing, we'll, we'll zoom in on that. The Seashell Headquarters of the World. So this was, in all likelihood, sold all over the state of Florida in every gift shop that you pulled into. And if you've been to Florida recently, which I have, you know that every block or half block or across the street, there is a little store, right? A, right. a tourist trap. Right. And these were probably sold then and they were probably around six bucks. So uh, this is a age dated 100 months, which is for quick math, 8.33 years. Uh, he which just is figure that out in his head. Mm -hmm. I promise he didn't calculate it right before the episode started <laughs> um 86 proof and uh very excited to open the sucker up so let's see if the cork holds which uh i give it a 30 percent chance of it doing so yeah if you happen to see our old crow chessman episode you know that the cork did not hold but that did which i am shocked i'm absolutely shocked that i Believable oh, and came out so easy. Uh, yeah so good a little bit of residue on the side but I think we're gonna be okay now one thing on these decanters you will get a lot of evaporation there's not a ton in this bottle um, because it's old this is from 1968 so 68 wow that yes was seven years before I was born Charlie well this is actually a year older than the old crow chessman that we had mm -hmm. previously and if you haven't watched that episode um, it kind of ties in Again, a little higher end decanter uh, than this one, but uh, still some great content and kind of what was going on in the bourbon world then. Yeah, as a matter of fact, when we post this video, um, I will put a link to that episode at the end of this video. So if this uh, kind of piques your interest That's and you genius. want to see that one, then, so then you, can, you can see it when we're finished here. So. All right, let's do some nosing. Yeah, let's do it. 
Great. Looks good. Yeah, great amber color, not cloudy. Not cloudy at all. Looks so really that's good. good. That and means that, the seal was good. That, absolutely. So yeah. when you're looking at, if you have an old decanter, if you have an old bottle and you're looking at it, you want to make sure that it looks like bourbon looks. So if it's cloudy, if it's got a bunch of floaters in it, if it looks kind of hazy, maybe think twice about drinking it. But if it is looks good and, and you know you can hold it up the light and see through it and it's not a cloudy yucky mess then you're probably okay so this looks great has amazing yeah, cling to the glass it does great like, legs it's like syrup smells delicious <sighs> nice and sweet only bean only mm -hmm. old bean smells like that and it's it's just a very classic, sweet bourbon smell. Um, there's no ethanol, there's no alcohol. It's just that kind of um, sweet, oaky. You get a little bit of kind of some char on it. A little char. <sighs> this one actually, I get a little kick of fruit kind of on There's the some nose, fruit on it, yeah. Which I usually don't get from older bean. And a little bit of that cola smell. Yeah, that kind of funk, if you will. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm well, ready to, cheers, ready sir. To try this bad boy. Did I mention I love Dusty Bean? It's good stuff. Man, is that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, coats, coats your mouth really well 86 proof but it has that viscosity to it that you don't it, it's it's kind of it's weird to explain because it's not like bourbons now it's viscous but it's also very kind of light um, so it kind of dances around on your tongue a little mm -hmm. bit coats your tongue it's not an overly complex bourbon no it's not it, it's got a nice a nice back end to it. Yep. Um, Great <clears throat> little heat on the finish, but not a lot of heat. Yeah. For 86 uh, proof, really smooth, really great yeah. drinker. Nice oaky, um, kind of that sweet oaky finish on it. So kind of sweet up front, just classic bourbon yeah. profile. It's got that oaky finish, a little bit of that bitter, um, that that flavor that I love, that chocolate, that bitter chocolate, Dark chocolate. finish to it. Yeah. And once again, I, I think previously we talked about the the chocolate pie crust mm -hmm. that's what i get on the finish of this and it's sticking with me too yeah it yeah. it the it thing lingers. the yeah the thing that i love about these old dusties is there's just a lingering flavor and it it doesn't and that's i think if we're honest and we're drinking modern bourbon the worst thing a bourbon can be is kind of flat, right? You know, you drink it and it's like, oh, there's some flavor and it's gone. That's really annoying to me. This stuff, just like two sips and you're still tasting yeah. it. I'm, I'm talking and I'm still tasting it and it's just really great. I will say I'm picking up a little bit of almost a metallic taste to it. And I don't know if that comes from the, from the decanter or not, I don't know if you're picking that up at a lot. It's not, it's not overly um, present, but it's it's there. Yeah, a may, bit. maybe a little bit on that last one. There's a little, and I have. It's probably just the lead. Probably the lead. <laughs> no, it, it. There is something. It, it's not metallic. It it tastes. It's a weird thing. It's that funk because I've had that on um, a really old bottle of old granddad that mm -hmm. I had. And I had that funk, I was like, man, there's a metallicness to it. And, then, and the guy I was with is like, yeah, it's, it's just that funk. There's nothing metallic in a glass bottle, but there's just something about that funkiness of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think everybody's palate kind of gets something different on that. Right. You know what I wish? That we I wish we this? had, well, that oh. too, but I wish we had just had a little taste of a Jim Beam, the, the oh, yeah. current day, present day Jim Beam, which I used to drink all the time. That, you know, Gateway Bourbon. Yeah. That's what you start with, Beam and Coke or Jack and Coke. Um, and I, gosh, it's been years since yeah. I've drank just plain old Jim Beam. Jim Beam. Yeah. yeah. So I wish we had. Uh, 
You know what? I am glad. About that. I'm glad you brought that up on camera and made us look like we. Uh, <laughs> a lot of preparation goes into this. <laughs> this is why we're so popular because people watch us and they're like, "God, I could do better than uh, them." Maybe but, that, that gives us maybe an excuse to drink it again it sometime. Again. So. Yeah. But yeah, to, to kind of circle back to the decanters and the moment in time, and we really dive kind of into this in, in that Chessman episode, but this is a 1968 bottle. Um, they started these decanters really probably in the, in the mid 60s, maybe 63, 64. But if you do a quick Google search and just type in Jim Beam decanter, you will see some ridiculous looking things. And I actually have um, th this is this is a Jim Beam decanter, and as you can see, um, it looks like a, an urn or or, or maybe a lamp. Uh, but this was an eight-year age-stated bonded beam, and it was one of the best bottles of bourbon that that I've ever had. It's it's kind of in my hall of fame. But they made all sorts just j and we're talking just Jim Beam. They made all sorts of weird kind of Art Deco decanters and the reason they did that is because they couldn't sell the bourbon in its normal form i mean because of counterculture in the 60s the the younger generation was not drinking bourbon that was what their dads drank their grandpas drank their uncles drank they were going to drink something different so uh the the big boys are like what are we going to do and they're like let's make some collectible stuff and put it out there Let's and it worked Put it in a decanter that looks like a shell. And, and Everyone will buy it. Well, and to your point, there, there's a, I've talked to a lot of people in the last couple of years that are like, I never realized that my my grandma's statues of Davy Crockett <laughs> were actually and, you know whiskey. and Ulysses S. Grant were whiskey. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're decanters. They thought that they were priceless heirlooms, and they're not. They're a bottle yeah. of hundred month old Jim Beam. A little bit of trivia here. Okay. Oh, so, I like this. If anyone remembers I Dream of Genie, uh, the show from, what, when was that show on? Gosh, was it 60s or yeah, 70s? Six, uh, I, think I know 60s. I watched it all the time yeah. when I was a kid, and I wasn't born until 75. So. Well, they do have reruns. Right. But. So that's what I'm saying. 60s or 70s. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway. Genie's home, the bottle that she came out of, was actually a Jim Beam decanter. It was very similar to the one he just showed you. That yeah. isn't the one, but it was very similar. Yeah, it was a Jim Beam holiday decanter, yeah. special edition for the holidays. Um, and it originally sold for like six bucks. And, and that's what it did. And to that point, to kind of tie that in, um, some of you may recognize this. This is the original Old Fitzgerald holiday decanter. And some of you may look at that and say, boy, that looks a lot like the current Old Fitzgerald decanters. And that's because it is. They just copied it. So decanters have been around for a long time, obviously. Um, when, when a distiller wants to make something special, when they want to make something collectible, what do you do? You throw it in something cool. Yep, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> can I see that again? This one? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, she's not in there. Okay. Just had to check. Yeah, I checked earlier. I tried. So I tried. So. Uh, yeah, and Glenn brought up as well. Why don't people make decanters now? Well, they still kind of do. And you have the old Fitzgerald line that is out now, special editions, couple of times a year release um, of the old Fitz bottled in bond. And Whistlepig recently released a piggy bank rye that looks like a piggy bank and it's in a big decanter and it's pretty cool looking too. So um, nothing's ever new, right? Things, right. it's cyclical. Nothing new under the sun. That's right. So Someone it, famous said that. Yeah, Who somebody did. I don't know. But was it you? It was you, right? No, it wasn't I'm pretty me. sure it was you. But, Someone much holier than me. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me that over the next couple of years if we still continue to see uh, more decanters kind of coming out, which I, I love. I think it's cool. I right? love it. Yeah, anything that's that's kind of cool and new, and if the bourbon's good, then even better. So Absolutely, and this bourbon was good. Um, it is good. So talk is. to your family members. Make friends with Grandma and Aunt Clara. Um, so if they do have a bunch of this stuff, uh, maybe you can get your hands on some. Absolutely. Um, look, you know, go to estate sales. Yeah. Go to... 
even yard sales or auctions sometimes, you may be surprised what you might be able to find and pick up that has been sitting in someone's house for decades. And true, true story. The old Crow Chessman that we opened actually came from a yard sale. Uh, a gentleman had a complete set and they set it out in the yard and kind of <laughs> not just like, you know, whatever, take, take not knowing whatever, what they had, not knowing huh? what they had. So awesome. Yeah. Well, Charlie, are we, uh, are we finished with this one for tonight? Do you have anything more to add on this beautiful Jim Beam decanter? You know, I think just to, to kind of circle back, I think the one thing that we proved is Florida is the seashell capital of the world. <laughs> She sells seashells by the seashore. He sells bourbon by the decanter. <laughs> Somebody famous said that. Good night. Good night, everybody.